This is Two Manhattan West. Its recent completion marks the final chapter of one of the most intriguing mega builds in New York's bountiful history, known as Manhattan West. It's quite literally built on top of a series of bridges, and from start to finish, this project required a mind-blowing amount of engineering. From revitalized skyscrapers to inspiring design, today we're exploring what the new Manhattan West has to offer. Originally conceived in the 1990s, the project saw its groundbreaking in January 2013. Permit approvals for the complex were obtained in May 2014, and under this plan, the project aimed for completion by 2020, a year that seemed so distant at the time. By the close of 2014, a $680 million platform was constructed over the train tracks situated between 10th and Dyer Avenues, forming the foundation for the Manhattan West development. And we'll talk about how challenging this was in just a minute. In October 2015, the Qatar Investment Authority acquired a 44% stake in the $4.5 billion mixed-use development project. This collaboration between Brookfield Property Partners and QIA aimed to develop 7 million square feet of residential and office space across five buildings. Plans included a 62-story residential tower and a 67-story skyscraper, with an additional 59-story skyscraper added to plans in 2017. Part of the broader Hudson Yards redevelopment mega-project, Manhattan West spans from west of Penn Station to the Hudson River. It officially opened to the public in late September 2021, but we would later learn that the entire project wouldn't be complete until earlier this year. Completed in 2015, the platform over the active rail yards was one of the greatest engineering feats in New York City of the century. So let's just do some thinking here. Manhattan West was to be built over an area that was made up of almost completely uncovered railways. To fix this problem, the railways had to be covered with something that had the ability to handle the colossal structural load. The first issue was that the platform had to be designed to have minimal impact over the rail service to Penn Station. An intuitive, the engineering group behind this, devised a design strategy featuring deep post-tension segmental precast box girders, and although that's a mouthful, it was widely successful in working within the requirements. These innovative components span across 16 tracks, enabling the construction crews to avoid disruptive activities at the rail level. But another issue was that the side-to-side -side distance was around 240 feet, all of which had to be essentially floating, only making contact with the steel beams between the rail yards below. To solve this, a launcher was erected on site, which had the ability to carry the 56-ton precast concrete segments and put them into their temporary place. This process was repeated for 16 different bridge spans to cover the entire exposed rail yard. This is a massive undertaking that, as I mentioned, requires an exorbitant amount of engineering and planning, but is necessary to enable a mega project like this one. The project consists of six primary buildings, one and two Manhattan West, the Lofts, five Manhattan West, the Pendry Manhattan West Hotel, and the Eugene Apartment Building. It also includes Magnolia Court, a 2.5-acre pedestrian plaza which is open to the public. The first of the group of buildings to be constructed was actually put in quite a long time ago. Previously named West Yard Distribution Center, the structure at 450 West 33rd Street was designed by Davis Brody Bond and first unveiled in 1969. Spanning 1.8 million square feet across 16 stories, the building initially sported a beige precast concrete facade with a sloped base, which clashed with the surrounding architectural aesthetics. At one point, it housed the headquarters of the Associated Press. However, in 2014, Rex Architects undertook a transformation, replacing the brutalist concrete exterior with a sleek glass facade and refurbishing its interior and mechanical systems. Upon completing the renovation, it was rechristened as 5 Manhattan West. The building accommodates various tenants, notably including Amazon's marketing division, Whole Foods Market, Peloton's interactive studio, and a sizable upscale food hall branded as Citizens NYC. Jumping to the tallest building of the development, we arrive at 1. One Manhattan West was designed and engineered by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, which I could be pronouncing wrong, but they're commonly referred to as SOM. SOM has arguably the best active resume of mega skyscrapers designing projects like the Burj Khalifa and the One World Trade Center. The building hosted its groundbreaking ceremony in 2015, and construction began soon after. Perhaps the most notable part of the building's design and construction is that the tower structure features a central reinforced concrete core in a perimeter steel frame. 
Notably, a section of the tower extends over the underground train tracks leading to Penn Station. To circumvent this obstacle, the columns on the south, north, and east sides don't reach ground level, but are instead connected to the core above the lobby. And because of this, the lobby is actually column free, where the structure is clad in dramatic vein cut marble. SOM had their hands full here, leading the structural engineering, with the building ranking as the current 18th tallest in New York City at 996 feet or 304 meters. Rising 67 stories and spanning 2.1 million square feet, construction of the tower reached its peak in August 2018, culminating in its completion in 2019. Upon completion, this skyscraper won awards like the 2020 Best Overall Project by the American Society of Civil Engineers and was a finalist for the Structures in Extreme Conditions Award in that same year. Currently inside of the tower sit some pretty interesting tenants like Ernst & Young in the NHL. The Eugene, also referred to as 3 Manhattan West, sits at 435 West 31st Street, serving as a residential tower. Breaking ground in December 2014, it actually held the title of the tallest rental skyscraper in New York City in 2017. Sitting at 64 floors and reaching 730 feet or 220 meters high, it boasts a total of 844 units, made up of 675 market rate and 169 affordable apartments. Although affordable is a relative term, considering the studio apartments I saw on their site started at $4,000 a month. The building offers a plethora of amenities, including a massive gym equipped with a full-size basketball court and rock climbing wall, a high-end coffee shop, a rooftop terrace featuring a private bar, and so much more. The Pendry, managed by Pendry Hotel, stands as a 21-story hotel with 164 guest rooms, including 30 suites, along with things like a restaurant and a bar on the terrace. Designed by SOM, construction commenced in December 2018, culminating its grand opening on September 17th, 2021, which also happened to mark the debut of the Pendry brand in New York City. The lofts are primarily used for commercial office space. This 13-story building was originally constructed in 1913 on 33rd Street and was redesigned as a flexible office space. And although it was redesigned, the renovation kept its historical aspects, including the high ceiling and exposed structural beams. Now to the newest member of the family, to Manhattan West. It was also designed and engineered by SOM and completed construction entirely earlier this year. The 935 foot tall structure yields 1.9 million square feet of office space and is the final component of Manhattan West. Two Manhattan West is built to reach LEED gold standard using renewable electricity from hydropower dams in upstate New York. Although if you've seen my previous videos like the one on the JPMC headquarters, then you probably know how I feel about that. It's part of Brookfield's big plan to switch all all of its US offices to net zero emission power sources, teaming up with One Manhattan West, its taller sibling to the north. And like its sibling, the building also has a very unique structural concept. Only half of the core here could touch down to solid ground. SOM aligned sculpted mega columns at the building's perimeter with subgrade spaces between the tracks. Almost hard to believe that the two towers that look so similar above ground are entirely different underground. In August 2022, global accounting firm K PMG announced that it intended to move its U.S. headquarters to the building in 2025. Totaling 456,000 square feet, the space KPMG will occupy represents a 40% decline in space currently leased by the firm in Midtown. In September 2022, hedge fund firm D.E. Shaw agreed to occupy eight floors in the building beginning in 2024. And I say all this because although it's a historically awful time to have commercial office real estate, there does seem to be some interest here. But it's probably way too soon to tell and we'll get a better feel for it over the next few years. After watching this video, one thing I think you should walk away with is an appreciation for the incredible engineering prowess poured into these massive infrastructure and building endeavors. Thousands and thousands of hours of design, simulation, and so much more are inputted before any of the construction can proceed. All of it in an effort to help revitalize an area that once looked like this to now look like this. If you enjoyed this video and want to check out some more content, I would really appreciate it. I pour so much of my time and energy into these and it always makes me proud to see the end product that I can share with the world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.